Hey. You know, I, I ain't start just saying your sister, because uh, we're getting old now. When I say your mama, you probably your mama just dies when fuck me up one of these days. <laughs> How about you just don't talk about my mama or my sister? You know, I, I, think, I think a your mama joke like once a year, like a well placed your mama joke like once a year, that feels good. Hey, what up, y'all? It's the Talking Normies podcast. We've already started off with talking about your mama jokes, so now uh, we're going to introduce ourselves with the best your mama joke we got. Uh, my name is Chris Johnson. Your mama so fat when she wears high heels, she strike oil. <laughs> 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 this is Pat. You gotta come back to me for your mama jokes. I'm not good at your mama jokes. Uh, this is Spidey. Your mama is so one. old. She got Jesus in her yearbook. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Wait, what was yours, Pat? I I got one. Your mama so ugly. Frankenstein demon on fucker. Okay, Gross. that's a good. One. You, you, this is Mickey. Your mama is such a nice lady that she raised you properly and is proud of the person that you become. <laughs> <laughs> Your mama so old when God said let there be light she hit the switch man I used to know a bunch of them there was one about like your, okay your mom is so fat it takes a full tank of gas to drive around her or right. something like that <laughs> uh, hey y'all uh, what's up we're the normies this is our podcast we like hey, to yo. end or begin every Friday uh, just kind of hanging out with you guys doing a little bit of the old chitty chat and hanging out mm -hmm. and we're always starting off with our weekend catch up to see what interesting things we've been doing with our lives weekend catch up what do you fuck nuggets been up to uh this weekend's the same old same old but i added a little something something different uh oh uh i did some D D for the first time oh Ooh, yeah nice. yeah that was fun what's your yeah. tinder looking like what do you mean? <laughs> I mean, like, what's your swipe game? I swipe a lot, but then I just, like, then you got to do the talking, and then it's just, just it's a work. Wait. I don't like the work. Wait, how do the I, work of talking to people that you meet on Twitter? So you yeah. just don't want to go on dates. How'd we jump to that from d, &D? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, how... Oh, I was just curious. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't like work, Chris. Uh, it is work. It, it is, is, it's, dating it's, apps are frustrating. Yeah, anyways. And it's, just heard, the, it's the month of love. So and I they're, thought, and you they're know. very predatory now. Um... Oh, but I was just gonna say D and D. It was fun. It was my first time doing D and D. I never done D and D before. Um, uh, well, I was gonna say the dice is very, very complicated. I think I need every time I need a roll, I'd, I'd ask Mickey which one do I, what dice do I pick up. I think hopefully once there's I a lot. Hopefully once I figure that out, it'll be a lot easier for me. I'll, I'll tell you this: I've been playing for a couple of years, and I, I still have to ask questions. Like it, it's a very deep rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but it's fun. It's fun. Puffy did a great job uh, being a dungeon master, so it was fun. Dungeon master Puffy. Uh, someone uh, QPO says that uh, on Tinder you pretend to be a different person, and so do you in D and D. So that's that's the relation. There you, you know, go. You gotta, uh, yeah. Spidey, what'd you get up to this weekend? The segue. Oh fuck! What did I do? Um, I think I was only doing like gym stuff. Um, we did some cleaning and we worked out a lot. We did some more climbing together. Me and Bria were kind of just resting, and we've set like a chore list. So we just kind of went through chores. Nice. Over the weekend. Adult stuff. Adult yeah, stuff. Yeah, basically, we adulted. I mostly played Dead Space, um, which is amazing. It, like, that, man, good remaster. Uh, all the fears that I had for the remaster are gone. Amazing. Nice. Just as good as the first time. And the more I play it, the more disappointed I am at Callisto Protocol because <laughs> it, just, it just wasn't Dead Space. <laughs> that, everyone be said it was bad. It, was, it, it was wasn't be bad, it was but like, okay, I, I think it was a victim <laughs> of uh, overhype because like the whole shtick was is like the Dead Space team left EA to make their own game and that's Callisto Protocol. So everybody's <laughs> like, oh my God. Womp. So it, was, it had like really big shoes to fill. I think it was a fine game, but there was a lot of like glitches on pc as there usually are uh it played fine on console i it was fine it, but it just wasn't mind-blowing like everybody was wanting it to be so Why? i think it's just a victim of overhype yeah but it was fine like losing it's, your virginity it's, it's fine <laughs> yeah i don't know i don't know about that like i enjoy my losing my virginity but i don't know what i'm talking about I, yeah. the second time's always better yeah, yeah. yeah that's true um, I spent my weekend, uh, I went out with cigars, went out for cigars and, um, hanging out with a buddy. She was just like, yeah, I haven't done anything. She was like, you want to get some ramen? I was like, yeah, sure. And then we ended up smoking cigars at a uh, burn. And I was like, this was a bad idea. I never enjoy smoking a whole cigar, but I do it anyway, yeah, for some reason, say. uh, hit the gym, got a lot, got a climbing in, 
which was good Ooh. AF. And then I spent uh, Saturday morning making homemade Kinet Leaky, which is a uh, Czech dumpling. Um, got the dough, got the yeast, hooked it all up, did that, trying to give Marquette a taste of home, my Kinet Leaks, or my Kinet Leaky. So one Giggity. dumpling is a Kinet Leak. Two of them, plural, is Kinet Leaky. So putting an S on it makes me sound like an idiot. What's in a dumpling? Mm. What's in a dumpling? It's just, it's essentially bread you boil. Oh, no, but don't you stuff the dumpling? I thought you just... can. Okay. No, no, no. Okay. So this was like dumpling, and then I made a beef goulash, and that was the sauce. So it's like Ooh. chopped up dumplings, oh, and then like this beef goulash oh, with oh, the so sauce like, around it. Oh, so it's like, is this more like a lunch dish? No, I mean, you can have it for lunch or dinner. We had it all weekend. We should, should make something. Uh, next time I do it, I'm going to make a big pot. Because I was told Marquette, I was like, damn, your mom makes like spends three hours making this shit. And she's like, yeah, but she makes enough that we can eat it for like two days. And I was like, oh, okay. Because this was, <laughs> it was like a waste of my goddamn time. <laughs> Wait, is, it, is it like not filling or what? what no, it's it? filling. It's just that like I made like maybe two servings. <laughs> so like we had it one, we had a, we both, so two servings, but that's like two of us, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So we had it once and there was leftovers for like one person. And I was like, I should have made like more. way, way more. Yeah. Whack. But it came out really nice. Uh, did that, and um, we had a problem with the bus, guys. The uh, oh, no. what happened? Oh, no, school, uh, we got new wood from this young kid, and giggity. he was like, "Oh, that wood's just a little wet because it was like outside recently." Ooh, giggity goo. And guess what? This wood was soaked, and so the fire kept dying, and it wouldn't keep going. And I was like, "This kid gave a shit wood." Damn. So then I, but I was worried it was something wrong with the sauna, so I came back to Nubby's and took apart the whole sauna. Like it's got a chimney on it. I took the chimney off, took the sauna out. Got out, cleaned it out, like looked through it thoroughly. Thought it was creosote buildup, and it was like, oh, it's just a wood. But I had to do all that other shit to figure out what it was. <laughs> and then, like, I went back into Navi's garage and looked at all the wood, and you can see all of the wet wood compared to all of our old wood that's super dry. So now I got to move like a hundred pounds of wood like off <laughs> to the side so Damn. I can get to the dry shit. So what was it wet? Because it was in the basement, or no, he just I, gave you bad wood? It's not bad. So Damn, when you yeah, cut yeah. down a tree, <laughs> you need to let the wood season for like three to six months. And I think that this kid, what? I don't know. Yeah, because a tree is wet. I mean, it's literally pushing water. So how do, how do you take, so you how just you dry need, it out? Yeah. You just got to let it sit and dry out. For oh, you a can't long make time. it expedite the process? Or you can sit it close to a fire. Is yeah, there like a if, chemical you can put? Uh, well, we're not putting any chemicals on our wood. They get, <laughs> <laughs> they get burned doing people. I'm sure there is, but a lot, you can, uh, if you build a smoker, like you can, like, you can keep it somewhere hot, but like you have to have a whole fucking shed for that. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. The point is, is that like I was like, man, this kid gave it like you couldn't. It looks damp, but it didn't look wet, wet, wet. We should break his legs or something. We should. Yeah. <laughs> is that yeah. legit? It's kind of legit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got a. Uh, you know, my buddy's got a clothing line, Kumafi. He did a crossover he come up, with bro. Uh, Columbia. So good I'm shit out here. for him. I'm like rocking that shit, baby. Damn. That is good shit. That's so, a huge company, man. Yeah, that was it. It was one of those things where, like, if I would have just looked at the wood first and thought about it, I wouldn't have done all the other shit I did. But I, it, imagine <laughs> if you got a flat tire on your car, so you took your car apart. <laughs> Figure out what was going on. Essentially, where I was at, and I was like, oh, I, I think I might have overreacted, but. So how long was that process? It just took like probably like three hours or so. Yeah, fuck that. It wasn't. I mean, the three hours was mo like it took me less than an hour to get the sauna out of there. But like the three hours was like cleaning it and like inspecting it and like it's super heavy. I got like flipped upside down. I'm like, what the fuck? Where's this? What's wrong with it? And I was like, <laughs> nothing. It seems fine. Chris, I'm surprised you don't get frustrated, man. The, you, that shit would frustrate the shit yeah, out he of does me. Not get frustrated. I mean, I definitely get frustrated. But like you don't like you don't take it out. No, just I like I, the channel patience, it in the, the right patience direction. you have for yeah. like waste. Like I'm not saying you wasted three hours, but like time is precious. And for me to do something like that for three hours, like that frustration, I'd be like, man, I could have been doing something else for three hours. That would that would have pissed. And, I mean, you, and yet you, you don't do yeah. anything. <laughs> <laughs> that is so true. Yeah. That is so fucking true. <laughs> but I, whenever something like that happens, even in other situations, I don't look at it as a wasted time. I looked at it as like lessons learned. And so now one, I've inspected my sauna oven super thoroughly. So I know that it's solid. And I know that if there's any problems in the future, it's not coming from that. I know that we've been driving the bus for a month and it's been moving a little bit every day when we drive it. And that's got no damage to it. So like, I mean, I learned plenty of things, plenty of things for in the future. They just might not come up later or might not ever Let's come up. Not. And then my brain will be stuck with a bunch of dumb shit. Is, it, is there any issues with like any of the components or the wood like expanding or shrinking depending mm -hmm. on the, depending on the seasons uh yeah but my guy who's a carpenter who hooked it up uh he's good at his job so nice it's nice. gucci bet. gucci all right bet what's mm -hmm. an oil change on a bus um Ooh. i think it's slightly easier 
Oh, word. Well, it's easier to get under the bus because yeah, it's like sense. three feet off the ground already. Uh, Netflix is fucking up, Mickey. Oh, man. Netflix is fucking up, but uh, before we get into that, I just want to give a shout out to DIYOJ again. DIYOJ. The jerseys are still fly. We're still rocking them. And you know what? I was just, uh, as you guys were talking, I, I think I figured out the acronym DIYOJ. What? Do it yourself original jersey. <gasps> Holy shit. I think I figured it out. That's what, DIYOJ. So there you go. Oh, That's shit. an easy way to remember the site. Do it yourself original when jersey. When they give you your award? We're going to send them a message, and a dude's going to be like, my name is actually James DiVaggio. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, grab your jerseys. We're, we've been pitching these on every podcast. These are sweet as F, dude. Yes, so, yes, yes, yes. And remember, you, not just jerseys. You can get these nice jackets. Let me the quality yeah. is amazing. Again, like Mika said, 100% customizable. Um, any way you want it, put some logos on it. Hit them with and the remember, code. use our promo code, the Normies. You get 20%. Hit them with the code. Check that door down that way, too, Mickey. No, 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 no. The door down this hallway? You can't. You can't see me. Oh yeah, Mickey. Mickey has now quieted the room. Um, I will say this while Mickey's on his way back. Uh, Instagram keeps suggesting me the dumbest shit, and I don't know why Instagram likes doing this to me. Damn. It's like, hey, do you want to see wrestling or do you want to literally see porn? That's yeah. the only thing I get anymore: wrestling or porn, or this one Turkish dude with a giant stomach who dances. For me, <laughs> Those are the three like, things I get. For me, it was like nature things, and then all of a sudden it was like, check out this chick's tits. And it's like I was watching bears. But then it's like you looked at the titties for too long, so that's all you're getting now. It's like no. Damn, I guess my algorithm is pretty healthy. My uh, I get like kind of uh, a, a lot of stuff. No, I, I'm with these guys. I usually get gym stuff, titties, and ass. Yeah. And then I keep liking music and, like, and photography shit sometimes, but it won't give it to me. All right, Netflix is fucking up. Netflix is fucking up. Um, so this is a ongoing uh thing and i i've heard that some things have been retracted or maybe some things were leaked so pardon us if if any of this information is wrong but i watched uh some ordinary gamers video on it and uh, moist criticals video on it and it seems like netflix is a li it whatever they're doing seems desperate it seems desperate. So, which is weird because I feel like yeah. they were doing good. But, nah, they but, but but like, dude, they they pumped so much of their money. Like <clears throat> the, at one point, they were spending like eight to ten billion a year just green lighting everything to see so, to see what would stick, and not much did. <laughs> they have originals, they have bangers for sure, but they're very few and far between. That's true. Um, especially with all the other offerings now but anyways from what i have heard and i don't know if this is accurate as of this morning but for the last thing i heard is they're putting a crackdown on shared accounts they're going to wi-fi location lock the primary account mm -hmm. wait, wait. You, you can still share your password but in your own home <laughs> yeah, so that doesn't even yeah, it it does well, not. Well, I mean, yeah, for to put it on all of your own stuff. Yeah, it does nothing you can't for anybody. Watch it at your mom's. Um, you can still uh, use your account outside of your location, but I think it needs like a special seven day pass, and I don't know if you have to like request that or how that Fuck works. Fuck out of here! Um, Stupid as shit. <laughs> yeah, it's really dumb. Okay, so I I can understand it. Fine, you want you want to like stop password sharing. That's one issue, but they're also making the inconvenience of. If you don't use your own primary account once every 31 days, which, you know, that sounds reasonable. We all watch TV, but sometimes I don't watch anything for like a month because, I mean, we watch t a lot of TV here. So I, sometimes yeah. I go a whole month without touching my Netflix. But supposedly, allegedly, allegedly, if, mm -hmm. if you do not use your primary account once every 31 days, they're going to assume that it's a dud account or a shared account and they're going to block it. And then you have to reach out to them to unblock it. Um, this is already coming after like a price, uh, price raise. And I just, it's just, I, I don't think anything good is going to come out of this. I think they're assuming that all those shared accounts are going to buy their own subscriptions. And I'm sure a lot of them will. What percentage do you think will? Five. I don't think, I, yeah, I, it's hard to put a percentage on it, but here's the thing. The people that have the shared account issue, they might buy in, but all of the, Longtime loyal customers like myself are probably going to get out because it's twenty bucks a month, and I barely which is so much. Yeah, I barely use it. Uh, the only reason I still have it is because my parents are sharing Same. sharing the account with me. But now that that's not going to be possible, I personally am probably going to 
cancel my Netflix account because it's getting too expensive. There's arguably better services out there now. Not the interface. I will say Netflix is still king of the interface. They have the best interface. But I like HBO Max. HBO yeah, Max HBO has a really good offering. I think Netflix is still really good for documentaries and stand-up comedy. And I am going to be sad to let it go. But I just think that this company needs a wake-up call. Because so I, I, I don't I, know what they're doing. I'm not a financial advisor, but I, I, I am predicting based off of nothing that their stock is going to tank soon. So Netflix is at a point right now where they feel like they got to uh, get more money, right? And... I don't know, uh, you, you know, you try to look at a situation uh, with hindsight. I don't know what they could have done to keep this from happening. I'm not saying that I, I definitely don't approve of it. And like, I am, my mom's going to probably cancel Netflix. It's the only person I know that has it. And then with our work one, it'll probably just get dulled down to only being here at work, which means I won't be watching Netflix, which, you know, it fucking sucks, but whatever. One, they don't release their numbers on how well things are actually doing, so there's no actual way to track how things are doing. The last season of Stranger Things is coming this summer. I think they'll see a boost in the summer, but like for them, like, I mean, we're not financial advisors and we're not fucking geniuses. We all see that it's a bad look and that people are gonna, so I feel like they know that at Netflix and that, yeah, if they are doing it, then it does seem desperate, but like, what there has to be other ways because like inflation has come up and like with that people like inflation has gone up shit costs more ain't nobody making more money well unfair we'll get into that later but the point is, is that like a lot of people are feeling the squeeze so yeah they're gonna let netflix go and they're just gonna pirate it we still know how to pirate shit yeah uh, again I'm, I'm speculating here but like with the whole hindsight thing i think their hindsight is oh shit we spent too much of our money experimenting on dumb shit so like the, i because I, I used to read articles they were spending billions a year just green lighting anything in everything and uh also you know once these other streaming services cropped up like they lost their contract for seinfeld they lost their contract for the office just a lot of these really really big shows which makes sense you know like i if uh nbc is going to make their own streaming service obviously they're going to want their shows back um but yeah dude i don't know we're live in the streaming wars it's just happening yeah. <laughs> what do you guys think you would go to because i'm thinking like hbo max hulu I'm probably gonna get hulu and hbo oh i think hulu Amazon. is the absolute worst of the bunch you know like really hulu? i think aside from watching I like hulu whenever all right so i always like i'll go to hulu to watch movies and shit I, first off someone think about i need you guys aside from solar opposites i need you guys to think of some like hulu originals but like i'll go to hulu to like watch christmas movies or halloween movies and it's always an ass selection mm -hmm. um their interface is cool i'll go there to watch new simpsons and we watch king of the hill there aside from that i'm not really doing much on hulu you didn't like their that. anime selection isn't super great but they did have chainsaw man on there right mm -hmm. yeah. which so like that was good but like it's not you know what i mean like hulu just Give me HBO Max. Give me some of the other shit. Mm -hmm. I'll do no, Disney Max Plus. Max HBO like Max. Uh, and honestly, HBO Max, Disney Plus, and Funimation or Crunchyroll, and I think I'm set. Like yeah, I like I Hulu's cool, but they I think Hulu is like I think also, yeah. you need is HBO Max, Prime Video. Yeah. And then and Prime comes with Amazon Prime. So yeah, that's not yeah, a hard yeah, decision. I, I don't even count Prime because that's like just it's my it, thing. It's yeah. just like included. But you know, what are, what are some uh, Hulu originals? Man, uh, Cloak and Dagger. Did you ever watch Cloak and Dagger? Um, nah. No. I heard it was kind of decent, though. There it, it used was right. to be right. some. <laughs> um, hold on, hold on, because there's some other ones, because they did uh, an X-Men um, kind of a knockoff, and I forget Legion? what it was called. Was it Legion or was, was it something? Mutants? Legion was good. Legion was, was good. Was FX. It was some... New Mutants? Ooh, yeah, but that was on Hulu. Okay. New Mutants. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So so yeah. it might have been New Mutants. And like, it was, was alright, but... I do think that Netflix is fucking up, but they're also like holding the flag of like some of the most og is shit. Yeah, like uh, Netflix. I don't think so anymore. I, I mean, think, bro, I think hold on. You, I, we got to go from back in the day to now. They had House of Cards. Like Netflix yeah, was one of the first sure. things to be like, bro, they got the shit. They put Bojack out. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Like Bojack, they did a yes. lot of really yes. good things. And that's me naming like a couple. You guys talk. I'll pull up a list. So well, I, I think what, with uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Pat. I think Netflix is going to suffer. You know, obviously, in this because they've been suffering. This is a desperate move, like you guys said, and it is. But they also. I mean, I mean, I'm not trying to be mean, but like the CEO people, like the the CEO executive at Netflix, are probably ten times as smarter than us, so they probably expect this. What we're what we're talking about, I think they're expecting this, and they know that they're gonna lose money and they're gonna lose some stuff, but they will still gain a little bit of money because again, inflation costs more. So whatever they could take out of us, they're willing to take, even with the bad PR and everything, because of what Chris said. 
there's the Netflix originals, and obviously there's some duds. But sweet lord, though, I'm looking at this but list. It's crazy. The our the the audience that they're looking for is not us anymore. We're not their audience anymore. Their audience is our parents. Our parents are not going to get away from Netflix. That's all they know. That's all they think. Think about Apple. Our parents only know Apple. They're not going to go to Google, Samsung, or anything like that. Our parents are not going to go put a credit card, create another password somewhere else, and go do something. Hold on. Before I... you hit the next point, just let me name them. Bojack, Orange is the New Black, Stranger Things, House of Cards, Umbrella Academy, Queen's mm-hmm. Gambit, Mindhunter, mm-hmm. Witcher, uh, Black Mirror, Ooh. fucking yeah, but Chris- Narcos, Big Mouth, Dark, uh, last mm-hmm. one, Daredevil. Very Ooh. few of those made it to completion. A lot of those got what? canceled or fizzled out. Narcos, absolute hit. A- absolute Daredevil, hit. Daredevil, hit. House of Cards fizzled out for obvious reasons. House of Cards did. Black Mirror, Black hit. Mirror. House of Cards was amazing though until that thing. Witcher, yeah. I think Witcher's gonna fizzle out because Witcher's like, fizzling Witcher's out. Witcher's already yeah, fizzled out. People, Witcher's I didn't see Queens Gambit. Witcher's people love already. Queens Gambit. Uh, Queen's Gambit. Umbrella Academy was fucking dope. Stranger Cancel. Things is gonna get completion. Orange is the New Black got completion. Can't, I mean, that also kind of fizzled out. Orange is the New Black. Orange is the New Black. No, Orange is the New Black managed to finish. And I will say, if you guys didn't see the last season with the shit that was going on in America while it was dropping, was actually fucking poignant. No, no. For yeah. sure, it made it to the finish line, but I'm saying like sometimes these shows took so long in between seasons that like it fizzled out. Yeah, it I agree with him. E- even with Stranger Things, like this this last season was a banger, but like the season before that, and like you know, like it, it's so it, they had an all right season. Like I'm just look, I'm not, I am not disagreeing with you that, but what I am saying is that as far as like content, if content is king, I do think that Netflix has some of the best fucking content. Sure. But, and, and I think that they're going to try to use that to carry him over. I have no I idea if it's going to work. But I also think that some of this, here. but I also think that like BoJack is an incredible show. One of the best I've ever seen in my life. But I will also say it's a little obscure. I don't think most people know about BoJack Horseman. So like they have bangers, but I think they're like, did you guys ever they're watch like Russian niche. Doll? I did not watch Russian Doll, but I did hear yeah, a lot of people was talking too. about it. That's a good one. Even yeah. Kimmy Schmidt, if you watched it, it Kimmy was Schmidt good. Kimmy was awesome. I like Kimmy Schmidt. I, so I, I, all I'm saying is, is that when you compare them to the competitors, I think the only people that can offer that same kind of quality of content and, and it's going to be HBO Max. The reason why Netflix yeah. is fucking up is because, yeah, they do have a lot of duds in between. But for a minute, I mean, they killed Blockbuster. I I don't and now they I are don't know these motherfuckers. I truly do not know what they're thinking. But I can't and I said this about Disney a while ago and I was wrong, so I'll probably be wrong about this. I can't imagine these motherfuckers are out here with billions of dollars in boardrooms full of lawyers and motherfuckers in suits and they didn't once think that, oh, spending a lot of money on things that aren't gonna work is a bad business model. This was their plan, this was their business model, and the way that it worked they got some cultural hits. Cultural. Yeah. They truly have cultural hits on this bitch. For sure. For and sure. those cultural hits, even even I... if they're just getting the residuals off of that shit from it being on other streaming services in the future, I think Netflix is going to make its fucking money. I, I, I disagree in saying that, like, the CEOs are, like, anticipating every single thing because, like, Hollywood continually makes bad adaptations or just like <laughs> just makes shit movies that could have been really good had they just listened to what the audience wanted so like it comes down to money what they're looking at is money and they're just making a lot of assumptions that like oh yeah we'll block the passwords and uh, people will buy them duh cuz they love netflix and duh i just i feel like at that level they're making so much money that they're out of touch a little bit and i mm-hmm. don't think they entirely know. the the facts and the information they probably have are from like small test groups and and they're that that's probably the statistics that they're working with it's a gamble that they're taking i don't see it working out yeah, hmm. Bracter also says he thinks that they're switching their strategy to start making cheaply produced reality TV shows. And if they do do that, then yeah, that is one strategy that mm-hmm. will work. But also, that's going to keep me off the platform because that's not what I'm on Netflix for. Yeah. Have you seen the shows about to come out? Mm-mm. Well, they're like, basically redoing a few different dating shows that they've done before with people that they've put on different dating shows already. Oh, so kind of like the real world? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah legit. It's going to be like they're doing the I mean, real world with like Zaz Love is Blind, yep. fucking... Mm. Too hot to handle. All right, listen, this is what they need to do. There's plenty of reactors out there. You guys need to put us on a reality TV show. I will absolutely burn every single bridge that I have with all of my friends to win a million dollars. I agree. I will fuck over every single person I know, (laughs) including my wife. You guys want want the circle (laughs) to be entertaining? Just and, put us right, on and here's the thing. Here's the thing. I don't know where my mic is. I, right. I won't even say it on camera. I have to say it off camera to everyone else. But don't worry. We'll give it. It'll be great content. Yeah, it would be. Hey, it would. We could I'm definitely just, do a circle. Speaking of dating shows, I don't know if this one is on Netflix, but I see a lot of commentary channels talking about this right now. 
Do you know there's a reality show where like moms and sons? Yes. Okay. Yes. Oh God. So, Milf huh? The Milf Mansion. Yeah, Milf Mansion. So like, moms and their sons will go into this dating show. Well, they didn't know. <clears throat> and then the sons will date like other moms. But they didn't know at first. It I, was a. It was a switcheroo. It was. It's just. It's a. It's a strange one. No, fuck that. I'm so not hold on. This it's is what I was one. just watching a video. This is what happened. The moms were like, "Oh, we're all going on this dating show in Mexico, right?" And some of their kids were already in Mexico because they got on a different dating show. Uh, uh, they were like, uh, "Oh, uh, so like it was a trick." They were like, "We're uh, like everybody in the family, or whatever. Like get your kids to apply." And then so they were like, "Oh." The moms were like, we're going to be dating all these young guys on this dating show in Mexico. And all the dudes were like, yeah, we're going to be like, uh, we're on a dating show where we're going to be dating older women. And then like, I guess they were told they were going to, you guys are going to be on like Cougar chat and you guys are on the MILF mansion. And then they like pull up the partition door wall thing and it's all of their sons and they're like, why is Connor here? And it's like, do you think, oh, we're uh, going to be dating other people's moms. So dude's like, bro, I'm going to date your mom, bro. Do you- it's- Fuck, hey, bro. Do, do I'm going to beat your ass. That yeah, I'm going to beat somebody's ass. Do you think there's a double standard there? Because let's swap the genders. Oh, yeah, like... Uh, dating daughters? Uh, <laughs> yeah, like sugar daddies? <laughs> Honestly, I think, I think the double standard is that the dudes would be perceived as a little more normal. In what scenario? In, in the case? scenario that a younger dude with an older woman is, is less likely to be seen in the real yeah, world yep, than yep, like yep, yep. And that, a younger girl with an older dude. That's what I was talking about. Yeah. What also, there about. was a they it have a challenge on there the where all the women were blindfolded and they had to touch their naked son's chest to figure out which one was their kid. And whoever won got to pick the son that they what? wanted to stay in a bedroom with for the night. Are these kids okay? Do they... Like, what's happening? He's like, yeah, me and my mom never talk about my sex life, but if she knew that I liked older women, that'd be weird. And mom's like, yes, that would be weird, and I'm sitting right here. Oh, but that's no. okay. That's Connor. I raised him to be a good boy. He knows how to pick the grays out of the pubes. and The Whoa. grays out of the pubes. I, I thought she it was weird that in the circle, it. too, in season one when that one dude showed up with his mom. I was like, that was kind of a look. Yeah. So, I, I do want to say some, one more thing about Netflix. Yeah, and and we're we're, we, we've been shitting on Netflix a lot. but They suck. They, they, they do they suck. They do suck. <laughs> and But... I think we also have Netflix from the United States point. Netflix is a global company. They have a lot. Their international catalog is way bigger than any other streamer platforms catalog. I, my, my, my parents look for that kind of content. And they can't find that on Hulu. Only thing you can get on Hulu if you pay an extra ten bucks a month on Hulu, you can get Hot Star. Disney don't got an extra Indian stuff. So, or uh, the platforms don't got that kind of stuff. Netflix does, and they're 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 in other countries. I don't think they're gonna die off the way you think they're gonna die. I'll off. Throw it either. I don't gonna think they're gonna of, be the next I'm blockbuster. I'm not gonna get rid of mine. I know but, that. But but here, here's the thing. Um, oh fuck! I forgot. I forgot. I. I Never mind, I blanked. <laughs> the last wait, of wait, us. Wait, wait, what did, I'm sorry. Wait, yeah. wait, repeat the thing you just had. Yeah, I just said I don't I had a good point. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I just think they're in a national catalog, and in other countries, not just the U.S., okay. other countries, Netflix is king. Okay, I got it. I got it. They do have a vast catalog, but it's kind of like when we used to get cable packages. It's like you getting a thousand channels. You know, you don't. You but don't, you, you don't mean, watch nine hundred. You, you want one thousand channels of Indian content. <laughs> um, if you can't get a thousand channels of so, Indian content so, on Hulu, then so, where are you also going to go? So here's what I predict: either that, either they're going to be able to rely on that and they're going to be fine, or things are going to get worse, and then other services are going to see the uh, potential in those types of contents, and they'll just buy them from Netflix, and Netflix will have no choice but, but to, sell. to sell it off. Because, that, that, because, that's, that's a possibility. And then they'll make their money from fucking... They won't just sell. They will be like, you can rent it. Rent it, yeah. Just yeah, like yeah. you do with Seinfeld. Yeah. And they'll be like, oh, I you just, want BoJack on your platform? Bet. I just... I, I don't think that they're fully going to die off either, but things are definitely about to change. Well, uh, all and, I know about... I, they're, the new, they're the blockbuster of streaming services, man. I don't <laughs> see any other streaming services with Korean films. <laughs> Um, yeah, or with like Japanese films, or you don't see Brahmastra. Okay. Or, yeah, that, or I mean, like, yeah, that's a, that's, a that's a good point. I, I do think I think we're gonna see, and and I also think that we're gonna see a rise in in VPN sales and a, a rise in piracy. Again. Yeah, <laughs> oh for sure. So Last of Us <laughs> goes woke and goes broke. I oh, can't believe man. they put two loving gay men on a show. Bah, uh, bah, bah. I uh, I tried to talk about this a little bit in my uh, Pat, you're going to get spoiled on part of Last of Us. I um uh, I tried to talk about this a little bit in my stream last night. I actually like just kind of started the stream by reading comments from the episode 3 uh, yeah. comment section. Yeah. Which 
Um, oh, spoiler alerts. We're talking Last of Us, season one, episode three. Yes. And we're not we'll going to be talking about this for about 10 minutes. We won't talk about the. Uh, well, we'll no story it. beats. We're just going to talk. We're going to talk about the controversy. Yeah. Why don't, why don't you. Lay, so, why, uh, why, yeah, why, and, why uh, I, I'll petition it as I'm giving. Uh, Pat, in the game Last of Us, there's a point in the game where you stumble upon. The game, not the movie. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, where you stumble upon a, um, a little uh, fucking house neighborhood thing, and there's a guy living there who was a prepper, and you do some trading with him. And it is implied directly in the game, if not overtly said, that he is gay. But you don't see any of that. In the show, they show you from him, like from the moment that everything starts collapsing, from him like being by himself and being alone to like him meeting this guy, they fall in love. They have a very beautiful relationship. And we see their whole entire relationship play out. And then we see them like, we see like the end of their lives and all that shit, right? And the main characters are barely in this episode. They're in the beginning and they're in the end. Like they're on their way to go see these people. We see this dude's life. We see them arrive. And that's it. And I think it's me personally, I think it's done well. I thought it was a super cute relationship. There's a lot of people crying on the couch. They got a lot of hate in like the in our comments what? and on IMDb for it why being didn't, like why didn't you cry, Chris? Uh, I don't cry at funerals, damn near. <laughs> it Chris was has really had a lot of sad, sad moments in his life. It I'll cry really, for certain things. <laughs> it was really funny to read the comments directed at Chris. There was only a few of them, but it was it was either oh my god, Chris's homophobia is on full display, <laughs> or Good on you, Chris. Real men don't cry. Yeah. <laughs> you guys have seen. I cried when we watched Goofy movie because that's yeah. what I cry for. Like that's a good one. Um, dumb, stupid shit that I I love. I cry for like hopeful moments and things. And also, I didn't really. While this was very hopeful and very good, it like warmed my so, heart. And in the end, they die. And I didn't think that that no, was sad either because they were like in their fucking seventies in the apocalypse. So like, I, I that's gave, a win. Yeah, that's touching. I gave my take last night on stream, so I'll let you guys go first. I'll, I'll yeah, Pat, that. what do you got to say? You're just, just not hearing about this. Yeah, uh, my question is so the controversy is just too guys having a relationship to you but don't the, haven't we had that in past the, the media? controversy mm -hmm. yeah exactly okay the, yeah the controversy was that the whole episode was about a gay relationship mm -hmm. yeah. which, well, we had which, broke that's not what it was the whole we had Will and grace we had this stuff in the media yeah before. these guys were like kissing they were in bed together it was shown as being very normal mm -hmm. which it is yeah. but like i also think that people are upset because the prepper guy if you know anybody who's a prepper, essentially they're portraying what I think is like this hard, stereotypical man. He's got the don't tread on me. Yeah, he's got the don't tread on me. Shit. He's definitely a fucking Republican dude. They're, they're, they're portraying this guy as, and this is me thinking from their point, as like being kind of soft and being kind of weak because he's in love with another man. But like that honestly feels like the hardest thing. What's what's more soft, having sex with a nice soft lady or having a fuck a bear? <laughs> <laughs> Answer that, internet. <laughs> riddle um, me this, riddle me that. So... What was Spidey going? Oh, um, oh, as far as the controversy goes, I I saw it coming. I mean, yeah, everyone is thinking like it wasn't in the game. Why didn't I need it? It's like, well, why wouldn't we have? Like, why would why not get more background on Bill like that? That shit was awesome, you know. Especially the way that it all. Well, yeah, you, you gotta watch. So it. in the game, he was he, he was, was gay, gay in the game. He yeah, was, but he was like, so then there's just never, there's gay. adapt in the game, so but they don't show in like. So, so here's what happens in the game. It it is very much implied that Bill and the other guy's name is Frank, right? Mm -hmm. In the game, and spoiler alert for anybody that hasn't played the game, it's been a long time. It's we're just we're only going to talk about Bill's. I'm not going to talk about any other part of the game. But in the game, you come upon Bill, and he's by himself, and we're trying to find Frank, right? We find Frank, he was bitten, he was infected, so he hung himself. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, they were, they had a falling out. They, they were not good with each other, they hated each other. Or Frank hated Bill, right? And, and there was this big animosity between them. So it was like a really dark moment in the game, where it's like you kind of happen upon this relationship, they had a falling out, and then one commits suicide, and then we just kind of leave Bill. And that was kind of the story in the game. What they did in the show is they flipped it and mm -hmm. they showed them actually having like a beautiful relationship to the end and kind of talking about like what survival versus living, you know? Mm -hmm. So like they kind of, we, we came to the same conclusion. We, we came to the same story beats, but they just decided for the show to turn it into more of a love story. And I think it was really beautifully handled. It mm -hmm. expands on the character and it was really, really well done. Yeah. 
Um, and it also relates to the main characters in the sense that our main character has been surviving and now he's essentially what we assume is about to go on a journey and part of that journey is going to be learning how like to live you know what i mean uh, like to find things to enjoy in life instead of just surviving the apocalypse Pat, i know this might be like a scary show for you but i'm telling you you are it's missing really you are missing out on one of the best stories ever told i'm like, cool period i also he's didn't think cool it was period. boring some people uh someone just said uh this was from uh solar bem was saying that uh maybe some people thought it was boring but also i didn't think i thought one i thought it was good i could understand if you come into this show expecting like a lot of monsters and a lot of action and we get to episode three and they skip that to give you something that yeah sure i will give you this it was a ward baby but it was like very well done right like they took this time to tell the story and yeah they could have been more action but i think if the story knows what it is and that's what they're going to give you i we've watched a lot of hbo shit here and like you can get an entire episode of anything in an hbo series that is kind of deviating a little bit but still giving you plenty of good yeah stuff good art i'm not even gonna call it, i, I Her, almost called it content i think it's good storytelling i think it's good entertainment here and i think the, it's worth it still uh, there's one criticism that i can understand and, it, and it, it's not homophobic f homophobic at all people who are only watching the show and they have no idea about the game never played the game never seen the game never anything about the game bill and frank have been mentioned in dialogue in episode one and two mm-hmm mm -hmm. But, like, I can understand being a brand new person to this story following Joel and Ellie for two episodes, and now we're completely deviating to talk about these two guys that I don't know who they are. Why am I supposed to care about them? Well, that's sure. why the show is sure. the way it is, though. Like, yeah, but, but, like, I can understand that point of view. Like, sure, it was a beautiful love story. It was a great episode. But the thing is, like, you and Marquetta haven't played the game either, and you guys, like, thoroughly enjoyed the episode. So yeah. I think that it can be enjoyed just standalone, but... That's the only point of view that I can understand is like, who are these guys and why are we supposed to care? And I mean, it's a little bit slower, but also it's after a main character death. And I do think it gives you plenty. I think it stayed interesting to Amster. Yeah. Amster, I'm not going to I'm not, I'm not going to go ham on you, but he's like uh, some people can't tell the difference between an agenda and like uh, just a story being told. Here's the thing, like and just I'm, I'm going to come at you a little bit like it's not an agenda, right? Like if this was back in the 1950s and it was an interracial couple anybody who was calling like oh they put an interracial couple on the tv that's an agenda would be looked at sideways like it's not an agenda it's something that was already in the game and it's them giving like more context to it in a way that's a little more beautiful because turns out some people do think that that shit's an agenda and literally they need to see this and need to have the conversation to get over that otherwise things won't change yeah. and until being gay is just normal which it is because people are gay in the past they're gonna yeah. be gay in the future I, I until it's just normal then yeah you're gonna get shit like this and you're gonna get the controversy and you're gonna get people talking about it i'll play mm -hmm. devil's advocate and i'll humor that point I don't think it's an agenda personally, but let's humor it and say that it is an agenda. What is the agenda then, right? The agenda is representation, right? And the thing is, it sucks to even call it representation because that means, and not just for gay people, for like, you know, like Indian people are becoming more prominent in, mm -hmm. in Hollywood. Uh, Asian people are becoming more prominent. And it has to start somewhere, right? Like we have to put them in stories to include them somewhere. And sure, you might see that as... Uh, shoehorning it in or as an agenda but it just it sucks that it's not normal to the point that we have to classify it yeah. as something you know like that that's the whole thing so fine i'll humor your point it is an agenda but like it has to start somewhere and if you're so deeply rooted in your hatred like the one comment that boggled me is is um it was calling out all of the guys on the couch uh -huh. and it was like you're crying is cap. You guys are lying. You know this is a bad episode. You're just pandering to LGBT. How the so, fuck can you make yourself cry? They think we're good actors, bro. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Some of these, oh, some of these people were so deeply set in their homophobia that when they I'm see another, <laughs> Jesus, be, be louder, Pat. Um, what I'm saying is some of them were so deeply rooted in their homophobia that seeing another guy have emotions for a story like that their first genuine sincere thought is no way no way no way no that, way no way that straight people can be empathetic for gay people and i'm not even being empathetic for gay people i'm being empathetic for the love story right? it, was, it, was, it, was, it was a love story i watched like, it twice and i cried both times <laughs> like, man fuck it if, if i'm as soft as a blanket for enjoying it then i i here's the the last thing is someone uh i, I was watching this video and it was talking about like I want to make this super quick. They're talking about like Antifa. And they're like, if you hate Antifa so much and you want it to go away, get rid of fascism. If you guys hate representations and agendas so much, cool. Normalize everything so people have to stop making shit about it.
Yeah, that's, you that's facts. If you're tired of seeing the gay agenda, once the gays are completely normalized everywhere, then they won't have to make agenda propaganda anymore. They'll just make regular movies and you'll see them and you'll just be like, oh, that's a regular thing. You get what I'm saying? Like, fucking get over it. Lord. Also, from, from a video game to a movie, they even like, they gave you 20 minutes of Joel and Ellie, then they gave you the main story, then they gave you 20 minutes of Joel and Ellie, which is a nice way for them to break that down, roughly 20 minutes or whatever. Yeah. Uh, before that, Joel's like, oh, we have like a five hour track. What were we going to watch them do for five fucking hours? <laughs> fight how many zombies? Like, I'm pretty oh, right. sure they're going like, to fight a no, shit ton get, of zombies in the series, Give me bro. that background the, story so I can see why it's important that they got to this place. And, and how it relates to shit. Joel. Yeah. There's one more criticism that I can agree with is in the game, um, the interactions between Bill and Ellie are pretty hysterical yeah. and iconic. And we didn't get that, but that's okay because what we got was so much better. Yeah, and it the whole bill segment in the game is gameplay heavy. The whole thing is we need to get this truck, and instead of them finding a nice pristine, pristine truck, it was a truck that had a dead battery. So we had to go find this thing and fight zombies along the way. I'm sorry, mm-hmm. clickers along the way, and like do this thing. So that whole segment was very gameplay heavy. Sure, they could have gone in that direction, but then it would have been like any other post apocalyptic show. And again, The Last of Us is not about the apocalypse it is about the two hu- people i assume it's about the it's about the human stories and the connection and the notion of of surviving well, versus hold on living now. And, and caring about something it's not about the fucking zombies it's are you fucking- saying the walking dead's not <laughs> like about the zombies either yeah. 28 days that's about found family that's not about zo- are you Shh. saying that all zombie things aren't actually about the zombies and well, more about that, the relationship well here's the thing i agree with you that that's probably what their intention was but come on the walking dead is like very much about like the the, oh, the, zombie, the, zombie, zombie. the zombie kill of the week you know like well okay, shit yeah, like yeah, they do get into i that. mean but uh, you know mom- but the deeper thing the, the level i, I sure, get what you're saying i'm sure, just saying sure. most apocalypse things literally like uh what's it dawn of the dead uh is about consumerism yeah. So, I mean. Yeah, man. Look at your media. Hey, we're going to talk about the movie. But before we do, I must mention that there's some heavy things happening currently in America. And I'm sorry that all the movies I've been suggesting kind of relate back to those things. Guess what? Not like we did it on purpose. Things just tend to not change. The whole uh, Tyree and Nichols situation <laughs> yeah. is super fucked up. If you guys aren't in tune to what's happening, you should probably go watch the videos because it's important for everybody in America to see how other people are being treated. And guess what? This time, if you're worried about racism, you don't have to watch it for that. Yeah, it, th- that's it's what's much more about fucking police brutality. Because guess what? Cops will ACAB. I'm standing by. It wasn't all cops um, fight me on it? All of the cops were black, weren't they? Yeah. Yeah. So what happened? So like that's what's interesting about it. This time is like now we are pure because like every time we talk about police brutality, it's always like there's always the question of it, racism. It's yeah. always a yeah. question of racism, but now it's like hey. It's it's the police. It's, it's the just po- the police. It's the yeah. police. It's it's. We need to fix the police. Motherfuckers uh, are like, what are you going to do without the police? Defund the police isn't about taking all the money away from the police so they can't do shit. It's about y'all keep fucking up at your job so you're going to get less resources. We can put those resources to mental health problems and things to fix things because police treat a symptom, which is crime. If you want to solve crime, more police won't solve crime. You need to invest in those communities in order to keep people from committing crime there's not a lot of crime in fishers because there's a lot of money in fishers that's true god damn yeah i feel like that's fuck if a cop followed me around all day he'd watch me commit 10 crimes yeah. it's mostly driving violations you didn't use yeah. your signal you're arrested now and then guess what my crime rate's gonna go up just anyway so we're talking Close about that because we're getting ready to talk about set it off set it up it was a good movie that i thought i thought it was wild. a good movie I liked it. I thought a it was nice a... 90s kind of schlocky almost blockbustery boy <laughs> I, I, I see the blockbuster because all the all the heavy hitters i i like the movie but nice. I, my expectations were what did you expect so after watching robocop and also, Starship everybody Trooper. in the uh, everybody in the uh, comments who watched this movie, please sound off. Yeah, after watching RoboCop and Starship Trooper, mm-hmm. those movies were old and it still held up. Mm-hmm. Watching this, like it held up, meaning like it held up, meaning like like what we're going through it makes sense, but like production, meaning like the actual movie, yeah. like, I didn't think it held up. For real? Yeah, because I kind of I, I, I because it's, it's, it's this two was two what what two it was like two and a half hour movie it was it was just too long for the movie first which to, parts do you think could have been cut first off that whole love scene like the not the love scene but the love interest the, that was pointless I don't think that was even he, 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 you're out of the movie like he didn't, he didn't he didn't do anything to the bank to like progress to the show he didn't help them out at the end or anything like that he just but had he a phone shows call. Stony what she could have had but the, like yeah. no no you, not could have what she could have been like if you went to yeah, college if but you did we, this they, they, they could have done it some like 
that that interest cost so many different scenes that we, if we didn't have that interest, it would have been better because it didn't do anything for me, at least. Mm-hmm. And when you tell me it was a heist movie, I'm expecting that. I, didn't, I did not yeah, say it was a heist movie. Those words. It was a heist movie. I believe I said heist. I, yeah, said what heist. You guys said it was I know a heist. I didn't because they ain't heist What do you guys said heist? One of you guys said heist. Yes. Yes. Yeah, one of you guys said it stuff. was a heist movie, and I went in with an expectation of it being a heist movie. And it's I like, mean, it kind of was. It was a heist movie. It was a heist movie. but like, and they executed it. It was a heist. There was a heist movie, but like, after watching a lot of heist movies, it didn't live up to those like. It was okay. an early heist movie though. They didn't get um, to see all the heist movies that we saw, where you know, they'd seen all the movies, like set it off, so they knew what not to do. The thing that I, I kind of agree with Pat, and I, th- I think, mm-hmm. I, um, for, first of all, I once Ursula showed up, I don't know what else happened. I stopped. I, <laughs> you I, fucking I, simp, <laughs> you munch. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> I just I couldn't pay attention any longer. No, I'm kidding. So, um, so what didn't hold up for me is the 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 tone in the writing because mm-hmm. here's the thing it's a very dark movie <laughs> yes, it is. it's super mm-hmm. dark but the scripting that. has that 90s kind of campiness to it mm-hmm. so like when the beginning scene happened even after the lady got shot in the head i like it felt like a movie within a movie like i was expecting somebody to be like cut okay we got it like i thought they were on a set like it, no that it, shit was heightened it <laughs> was it was like over the top and it was almost like comical but then I was like, oh, no, they're being dead serious about this. So I think what I had trouble with was just the tone because, like, it's super dark. But then it's also kind of got that buddy, mm-hmm. that kind of buddy. We're going to watch a lot more movies with that same kind of budget. <laughs> and, you know, I, I, think it's still, great, I think it still holds up, though. I mean, so um, I want to specifically say, too, that the director of this movie who, you know, I think tone really comes down to the director. F. Is Gary Gray. F. Gary Gray. Do you know what movie he directed? In 1995, this came out in 1996. Mm. Friday. Uh, oh, that makes sense. Okay. okay. So like, yeah, see, it had, can, I, and I give you that yeah, the tone is time, there, but yeah. like, it's. I think we got a lot of that from like black directors in the 90s that were just kind of starting off because I don't know what he did before Friday, but like his first movie was Friday, so a lot of these first ones come off being comedy, except for John Singleton. John Singleton obviously wasn't fucking yeah. around. We'll get to that yeah. later, but like. uh you know, so I, I do give you that. that like, it is. Because, I mean, bro, he just shoots the fuck out of that lady in the beginning. For no reason. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that, yeah, that, yeah, that means that money, I, I, And again, yeah. I was having trouble with the tone at that point. So when she got shot, I actually, like, laughed. I was like, what the fuck? Because, <laughs> again, I thought, I thought it was somehow still a comedy. Like, I was legitimately expecting it to turn into a movie set. And, like, Vivica mm. A. Fox was an actor on some movie. Oh, you something. thought it was a comedy. I guess I fucked no, up. Hell no. Yeah. Let me. Uh, bef- no, I, you guys didn't say it was going to be a comedy. It just felt that way. Until, Let me give until the. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> the rundown real quick on the movie for anyone who didn't watch. I want to start these by doing like a really quick overview, like one minute. I also like to say my mom and aunt really loved this movie when I was a kid. My aunt worked at a liquor store that had like the double glass pane window with the like little swivelly thing. Mm-hmm. And so I think this really hit for them because my aunt would always quote like, what's the procedure where there's a gut in your head? <laughs> she just say that shit like in the kitchen to herself. And I'm like, okay. But um, all right. So Frankie, Stoney and Cleo and Titi. Uh, sorry, Titi, you are. Not the greatest one in this movie. No, but, she's not. Uh, but, but she was the weakest trying. link. What was wrong with that TT? She, she, she was like, hold on, hold on. Let me let me do the overview. Yeah, do your, do your uh, they're all dealing with some shit. TT can't afford a babysitter. Her job sucks. She's got a she. She's not making enough money. She's got to bring her kid to work, and her kid gets taken by CPS. Uh, Frankie just got fired from her job because she knew one of the bank robbers. They lived in the same fucking uh, projects. So fuck her for that. Uh, Stony uh, can't put her brother through school, so she's got to sleep with old man. And then her brother gets uh, murdered by the police in a oh brutal manner that's yeah. kind of over the top. As, as, so, as the top. soon as the dude was like, "You want that haircut?" I was like, "He's yeah." I saw it coming. Yeah. Um, I, I, I was like, "He's getting shot by the police as soon as he steps <laughs> outside." And then there's Cleo. Uh, Cleo wants more out of life. Uh, Cleo kind of doesn't give two entire fucks. Um, she's really being herself borderline being misogynistic to a point which is kind of wild and out of everybody in the crew she's the one who's just like so we're killing people today and she didn't even kill anybody well well, she killed somebody she didn't even kill anybody it's wild yeah that fucking security guard that comes in Rambo at the end right bro (laughs) man what a piece of shit really (laughs) so uh, oh and then uh, the doctor from (laughs) Scrubs is in it I liked it the Uh, doctor from Scrubs I like him as a character but not him John C McClellan he did really good in his role he did you wanted to hit him in the face yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> so, all right, let's let all right. Now we can discuss the movie. So, I the way the movie started, I was I actually like how the movie started. It was like a nice cold open. Mm-hmm. I, I I get I miss so 
again, me going into a heist movie, I'm thinking heist. Yeah. I'm not thinking, because like this movie had a lot of layers that we could dive into, but I'm just going what? from... That, but I'm just gonna go with the heist. I'm just again because when you told me it was heist, I, my expectation is a heist movie. Okay. I'm going off for like that. So when that for, that scene opened, I'm like, oh shit, okay, cool. And then when she, the girl got shot, I'm like, okay, Vivica Fox is in this. So how I'm gonna figure out how she like how she like I, like I thought she was in it. You for, thought there was a mystery. Yes, yes. So I'm like, okay, how she in this? Very straightforward movie. No mystery. No mystery. No mystery. So I was trying to think about that. Then obviously, then it just immediately you knew it wasn't a mystery because she got fired from her job so anyways but i liked i actually did like the opening um because I, again it was my expectation it was was going to be but i the fucked up thing was the son told her that he wasn't going to college That's her brother it, brother i'm oh, sorry yeah, yeah. To go to do that she wasn't going like he wasn't going to go to college anymore because uh he didn't get accepted mm -hmm. i was so shitty i was fucking livid wow. she would you have slapped him too Yes, I would have hit him. Would and you have torn up the check though? No, yeah, I would have no, not, not torn up the check. Yeah, I'm not. I'm gonna keep the check because like yeah, you, you, you work like, for that money. She earned that money, man, ten times. I was shitty that she had to go through that, and this motherfucker lied to her and told. Yeah. Her, Just be honest from the beginning, bro. She's the one who took care of you from the beginning, and she went to go fuck another dude for you, and she hated herself for it. I was so shit. And the motherfucker had the right to storm off at the fucking... Bro, he just got slapped. If my sister slapped me, I'm leaving. Yeah, but but I I know that was your sister, but in the, I think their role's a little bit different. I think she's more like a mother figure to him. Yeah, but also from yeah. him. He, he, I mean, he they didn't know. I'm not, I'm not giving him shit for leaving, but... Uh, I mean, I, I get you, but like... I, I guess he didn't know, but like... He should have known that how where they are in like the dynamics of the family and how what she does for a living to come up with that kind of money. She must have done something like... No, I mean, I mean you, don't, you don't know. Like, that. she must have, like... Honesty goes both ways. I mean, she wasn't really... I don't, like, yeah. He, I, I, but you're going to tell you, you're going to tell you, hey, I fucked this dude so you could have this money? Like, yes, you're not telling anybody that. that's going to make your ass go to college. I don't know. I don't, I don't think any mom's going to, or any sister is going to do that. Like Your sister has sex. If you have a sister, she yeah, has yeah, sex. Yeah, yeah, like, fact. I, I, but, like... Again, I know she was a sister. I know her. she was a sister to him, but she was, like, the mother figure to him. I, I, I know what you mean. I, I'm, like, I'm being fussy. I'm yeah, fucking so, around. like... But I was just, I was really shitty about that, and I felt bad for, for I, I felt for her so much, <laughs> and then I wanted a movie to be about her a lot, and which which we, I, I'm glad that she got the happy. She's end. kind of the main character. She I think. is, but um, it's an ensemble. But it is an ensemble. Yeah, but she got the, the happy ending, which I was I'm, I'm glad of all the people she got the happy ending. But the layers, yo. So first off, what like I. The whole AP thing, right? Mm -hmm. The guy knew that his the because he was already like hyper, like he was in the, in the apartment. Right? Yeah, he mm -hmm. was already hyper, knew somebody was after him. But then he invited the kid in because he knew he was a kid. Well, no, that's did, just because he's a thug like that. He's someone's after him all the time. Like, so, like, did, yeah, did he like, knew that he did he knew the cops were out? So no, you think it was he, no? I don't think it was a setup. Okay, uh, I thought it was a setup because, because he didn't even want it. If it was a setup, it would have been like a wink and a nod to the camera. He was just like, "Come no, on, bro." I, I think what they were doing there is like because he's not going to college now and. So he knows this guy that just robbed a bank. I think it was kind of insinuating that he's probably going to go down a bad path. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's so the, the, okay. Because I was thinking of as a setup, but I'm glad that you brought that because like the layers is good in that one. That the cops automatically thought that <laughs> they riddled him, bro. They they. Yeah. they Bro, it was obvious it was a champagne bottle. Bro, first off, he was bro, face down bro, already. Even yeah. at the end with with uh, Vivica Fox. He didn't, when he's walking up to her, he goes to every cop and he says, you wait. He didn't, yeah, he didn't, didn't, he didn't say, he didn't say stand down. Yeah, he, said, said, wait. he said, you wait. Yeah, wait a minute. <laughs> because you we're doing wait. it. Right. We're just not doing it now. Even when Queen Latifah's down. Yeah, but I didn't it's also, that. Once again, like when I they. Thought, I thought when he met you, I thought, I thought he meant stand down. I didn't know. I didn't. Nah, stand you down. Stand down. Stand yeah. Down. yeah. <laughs> also with Queen Latifah's death too. Like. Literally, they were like, "We're gonna shoot her until she's like Swiss cheese." Bro. Yeah, yeah. Also, oh my but, but her, 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 also her death too was like uh, excessive force of shooting her. I thought that was stupid. Like, she got like That's sixty the whole movie, bro. bullets. That's the whole movie, bro. Yeah. She got like first off, she got sixty bullets. Go just going in the car because she was already got hit up there. She gets out and she shouldn't have done that. And took out more people, but like, she got sixty more. Like, come <laughs> yeah. on. Uh, oh, Spidey, man. had you seen this movie before? Uh, like younger. I don't even remember when. I know I wasn't supposed to watch it when I saw it, but I seen it. Yeah. yeah, it is. It's it's a bit of work. I don't know why I think heist movie whenever I hear it either. Like whenever when someone talks about a heist, they're like, "Yeah, we still gonna set it off." I'm like, "Yeah, it's heist movie." <laughs> yeah, that shit was. Did you guys notice the famous rapper in this movie? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Aside Aside from, Dre? There you go. Yeah, Dre. Yeah. Dre's yeah. selling guns. Selling guns. <laughs> um, I also think it was um fuck, what did Dre do? Now I forgot what I was gonna say. Mickey, you were talking about some things earlier too, uh, like with the money situation and Luther. Who was Luther's a huge piece of oh, shit. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Luther was a piece of I shit. I just can't but like, man, as soon as they chose to rob the third bank, I'm just like, okay, well, I don't know how you haven't been caught yet, but they had seventy five thousand each, mm-hmm. which Luther stole, mm-hmm. and then they didn't find the whole money. So I'm guessing he just hid it somewhere, and they didn't find it because there's no way, yeah, you that can't. he spent all that money yeah. within like what, like a twelve hour span, week. even a week. Yeah. I know I can. I don't. I you would. It'd be obvious. He was in a motel, bro. Like he could have stayed yeah, at the Ritz Carlton at least. My guy. He was, he was still yeah, in he's town. Yeah, he's at a five hundred dollar a night motel, maybe. That's true. That's uh, true. He was living I, low key. So the movie also does another thing too. It shows you they don't have a lot of options when they're sitting on the roof smoking mm-hmm. weed and they're looking at the yeah. factory. Mm-hmm. They're like, they used to pay motherfuckers fifteen dollars yep. an hour. They're brought. I got all si- kinds of overtime and shit. And it's like, yeah, but like it's gone now. Downsizing, layoffs. And this oh, was where have we heard layoffs before? <laughs> is it weird that things are kind of the same? Same. Right? Yeah. Is it, is it weird? Movies are still gonna play the same. This way. this movie also like there was the if message. If you updated of, the movie, you wouldn't have to change anything. There was one good message in this movie. Mm-hmm. I, I, I took away a lot, and it was that them sitting on that <sighs> roof, the all, mm-hmm. all, all the person on that roof, and I took I took a lot like. That was right after she got, I wouldn't say rape, but right after she did her, like, she had sex for money that she didn't yes. want to have sex for. Right after that moment and all the stuff that they're talking about, like, the girl lost her daughter, uh, son. Mm-hmm. The, everything is hit, everything's crashing down on them. But the one thing I took away from them is, like, no matter wherever you're in life, either poor or rich or whatever, everyone's still going to have the same problems. And at the same time, like, your problems don't, like, the, why I took it as like the problems are going to be there regardless. You're still going to have to deal with these problems, but it's like how you, your attitude or your mindset for dealing with those problems. They were just there with each other, having fun with each other, and let these problems melt away. So, like, even when there's problems shit around you, you could find a little bit of happiness. A little bit that, of weed? A little bit of happiness oh, 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 that maybe, right you know, like <laughs> could make it worthwhile. Like, you don't have, like, even if you're suffering, you don't have to be in suffering. Hmm. Yeah. You know, that's I mean, what problem, I took it away. But literally, none of their problems were going to go away. Yeah. All of their problems were going to And I say it's you, like you money would have literally solved their problems. Your kid it ingested bleach or something. Yeah, like chemicals at your job that they shouldn't have been at. I, they can't keep you. They're gonna they, take your kid. They could have watched that kid a little better. They, oh, yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they yeah, could have sure. put him in a there room. Were four where, adults in that yeah. room, and this motherfucker got in some poison five seconds after being there. But like, it seems like it's something that she's done before, because they were just like, "Oh, you did this," like, and they were just kind of bummed yeah. out about it. No one wanted to deal with the kid. Yeah, yeah. Kind and of kind of not sad. to say like one, it is definitely on them too. But look at their work environment, bro. Luther's yeah. literally like, "You was late, I'm docking your yeah. pay." And like, he does what shit the... talking. He does, bro. Man, he I... talks so. Much. He was just like, "Like Luther, my guy." And he was like, "Luther, you a cold blooded motherfucker." And he's like, "You goddamn yeah, right." right. Mm-hmm. It's like, bro. And then, I, I know it was wrong. But but I, I cracked up when he said, you. "Ladies and gentlemen." I cracked up when he called her <laughs> "ladies and gentlemen." I know it's wrong to laugh, but I laughed at that. Yeah, that was scary, Queen Latifah. Oh no, yeah, absolutely. Pat says he had a crush on Queen Latifah. She would. Crush I, you. I, 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 I had a huge crush on Queen Latifah back in the day, bro. Oh my god, bro! Like last holiday, that movie last holiday. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. See, that's that's not scary, Queen Latifah. That's uh, after right? like, UNITY and all that. UNITY, that's the mm-hmm. unity. Yeah, like if you before that she was ever kill. end up in a room with Qu- Queen Latifah, like you, you're getting pegged. Like <laughs> she, she's gonna break you. <laughs> no, not you know what? She's a gentle lover. Let's be. Yeah, honest. She, yeah, we don't know how Queen Latifah time. likes it. Um, oh, she might go back in the day in the bedroom. Yeah. So <laughs> Jada Pickett Smith, Queen Latifah, uh, Vivica Fox. Fox I do think uh, Blair Underwood did a good job because he's kind of like uh, he's Ursula, like, yeah, Ursula I, let's not forget about Ursula. Or, let's not forget about <laughs> Ursula. He's like, uh, I went to school, I did this, I did that. He's around all these bankers and shit. Like, it is a possibility to be like upperly mobile. But even when he's talking to Stone, he's like, you even leave L.A. She's like, nah, I ain't never left mm-hmm. out of here. It's like wild. Even though like LA's got so much, you still get the feeling that like she's never even left like her hood, the neighborhood yep, she lives yep. in. Mm-hmm. LA's got mountains and deserts and beaches and shit, and she really seems like I've just been here. Like this is it. And I mean, look, man, it's poverty, bro. Like that's what the whole movie is. These motherfuckers ain't got no chances, no options. They already know people that are robbing banks, especially from Vivica Fox character Frankie. 
I'm shitty. I got I'm shitty fired. Got Vivica Fox. Like, yes. Of course I'm going to rob yep. a bank and then the fucking cops like I know it's them. No shit. No shit. You got know fired it's on them. Bullshit. Though, and like right. I, what'd you I, say? Hold on, what'd you say? She got fired on bullshit. She oh, did. Yeah, I was I was so shit. It's like, bro, you saw I just saw her get like somebody's brace blown out in front of her face and you just fired like I've never seen somebody like done that before. I like, got fired immediately after I They fired her before she could clean the blood off of her. Yeah, bro. I would have tried to sue them. Well, guess sure. what you need to sue? Yeah, money. Yeah. Money. This is like, I think a lot of people are like, you know, money won't solve all your problems. No, yeah, it, it won't, but it will solve a lot. It solves a lot of problems. And for them, uh, and so the last big heist that they go through, and they're on the... the <laughs> oh, I did like uh, the the one where Queen Latifah comes driving through the walls. Yeah. Yes. It's absolutely wild. Yeah, oh, player. wait, before we get to the last heist. So I watched the uh, director's cut, which... Like, like one it, minute it, longer. It, it, yeah, HBO Max said that that came out in 2009, right? So as I'm watching this movie... I'm thinking it was made in 2009. And as I'm watching this movie, I'm just like, eh, it doesn't feel like 2009. <laughs> and then it confirmed it when we saw Homie's studio apartment with the fucking mustard yellow walls and the apothecary furniture. Yeah, I was yeah. like, okay, this is, this is, this is, this is, this is not, the, the night, this is not the 2009. Night. There's no fucking way. <laughs> Even his vest set up. I was like, <laughs> bro, what are you wearing? I know that that might have been the shit back in the day, but hell no. Uh, I, like I said, I didn't like that interest at all. And I'd like the love interest because I think they, they could have done it and made the movie shorter. Um, but I did not like how her friends were ganging up on Jada Pickett Smith. She wanted to get out, she had an opportunity to get out. Peer yeah. pressure. And mm-hmm. the way they said that, like, but they're not a fucking gang. They were a gang. It, but no, they were they weren't. Sorry, sir. They were doing okay, gangs. Sorry, yeah. sir. Yeah. They, they, they never got an issue in a gang. They never said a gang. Hey, were a gang. I have a question. Were they doing issue. organized crime together? Then you're in a gang. Yeah, that's a gang. They, they, they the only way gang. out is in a box. <laughs> See, but they never did that. Like, yeah, I, yeah they did. I mean, you know? I don't think they had to say it, but like, literally, once we're all linked together with crime. But also, they they mm-hmm. were like they were they were friends before a gang, mm-hmm. and I figured that they would let her out if she had a way out, and she did have a way out. They and, didn't know that, did they? I yeah, mean, they, what, they, but, they but hold on. I also like the point out that after their second heist, they did the one, and she was like, ah, eh, and they only made. Three thousand dollars each off of that first but, one. But here, here's the thing with that. Th- okay, so another uh, under layer of this movie is that like America has a very bad education system, especially when it comes to financial literacy. You could have taken that three thousand and possibly like three thousand is not going to get you anywhere. It's not life changing. Mm-hmm. You can't make any moves that's going to change your life. But there's things they could like. She spent her whole three thousand on the car. Yeah, and, yeah. like Cleo mm-hmm. spent it all on the car. So I think it was kind of showing that too. Is like. They 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 got through like you could have done something else with that three thousand, but again, you wouldn't know what to do if if it's never, also, if it's never been taught to you. I yeah. did the math, and that three thousand would have translated to about five thousand in today's money. And I think like skipping town with five thousand dollars still is impractical. But on that second rip that they did, where they all got seventy five each, and that was the last one. They were all dipped. like, they were like literally. They I think they said we're out of here in three days. Yeah, they literally so they got enough money to dip, and they were like three days. We're fucking out of here. Seventy five thousand dollars is enough. I didn't I, even do the calculation for that one, but that would have been easily. That's more than a year's salary. That's like two years' salary. I don't know why you there. would hide it in the vent. Yeah, like, I get and that. I also was... don't know why you'd hide all the money together. Yes, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, it made it sense just... to me for them to do it at the vent in their workplace. It's a place that you go commonly. It's somewhere no one's gonna really look. Somewhere that no one's gonna be surprised if you. But go there's cameras the in that building. But it's a building. There could, I, be, there could I was be a ma- janitor walking around with a trash bag. But, the, but, the, but there could be like maintenance issues. Anybody could go into the. You know, it's I a mean, very slim you don't, chance. Yeah, you don't want to get caught with the money because that's gonna be you're gonna get fucked up in court. But also, like if we all hide all of our money together. Let's say we all hide the money together and Spidey decides that he's going to come to the hiding place and take all of the money. The, and the next thing you know, Spidey's going to pretend like he didn't take the money. We're all over here blaming each other. Mm-hmm. Like everybody should have took their own individual 75 and hid it in their own individual yeah, hiding holes. But the thing is, is that they're not criminals. There's a, you know what um, I mean? If they were criminals, they would have known to do these yeah, proper criminal things. They could have just taken the money to Dr. Dre. This guy. And just had hit his money at Dr. Dre's place. And Dr. Dre would have took Dre, it. I don't know. Dre's Dr. Dre and Queen right. Latifah were friends. They were. Yeah, they but friends like that. Uh, hundred thousand dollars. We friends, and you it, still. It, you a fucking criminal, bro. I'm gonna leave hundred fifty thousand dollars with your ass. I'm asking to get robbed. It felt yeah, like wow. a friendship based on favors. So it, yeah. it wasn't like a genuine friendship. Uh. But there's a there's a really old movie. Um, I've seen the Bollywood remake of you it. You know why? But but there's this guy <laughs> that like robs like a jewelry store or something. And he hides like a bunch of diamonds. He hides. Something. Oh, you're talking about Blue Streak. Blue Streak. 
in, in, in the cop station? Yeah. 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 Martin Lawrence. That's, that's Blue Street. That's, that's a great yes. movie. Oh, yeah. okay. Great I've movie. seen the Indian remake. But yeah, that's yes. There's an Indian remake of that? Indian remake. Oh, God damn it. That's what India does. They see popular Western movies and they're like, well... Oh, we gotta, we watch gotta that. script. <laughs> we gotta watch that. Uh, Blue Streak would be cool. I, I didn't know that's Blue Streak is great. Movie. It's my favorite movie. Um, man, so I think uh, for me, I, I I like this movie a lot. I think it's a. Uh, it's. it's a, I grew up watching it. I don't know. I, I like it. I understand that there's plenty of flaws in it and shit. But like for me, like a '90s movie trying to be like, hey, this is like the '90s like blockbuster equivalent to like some shit. I'm like, yeah, I'm here for it. It was a good nostalgia. Yeah, it, it was a good. It's a good for the time. And if you guys, didn't, <laughs> if I didn't go into it as like a heist movie expectation, I think I would liked it. But also, we had two big bangers before this, and I'm ex- like, I was expecting that same level. See, I, I wanted to start off with the head scratchers, but I think I pretty much told y'all last for last Friday. I'm gonna double check. I was like, yeah, it's just a watch it movie. Like a little. Yeah. I, well, I I I don't know. I was I was I was ready for it, but then I, there's throughout the movie, I was like, I saw myself just be on the phone for a while. I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're not all gonna be bangers. It's more for the analysis. Yeah, yeah. And I I mean I like this one a lot. Um, so since we're here towards the end, I'm gonna text Spencer, but I'm also gonna talk about the next movies that are oh, on yeah, the James list. Oh yeah, James Gunn. We're talking about James Gunn too. Oh yeah 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 yeah. So uh, I'm gonna mention these movies on the list, and we're gonna talk about James Gunn after this. So I um. I am thinking, here's my thinking here, um, next week, uh, do the right thing. I was going to push that one towards the end, but unfortunately, topical in a certain way as well, yeah. but still good. Spike Lee's first movie, uh, pretty good cast, never seen um, it, really funny. It's in the uh, historical movie vault for America. I'm thinking after that, Black Dynamite, and then the last one's TBA. Uh, I think Black we Dynamite. were talking about doing yes. Uh, yes. White Man Can't Jump, or there's a potential to be another one. We're going to discuss it later. Black Dynamite. So, that's yeah, do the right thing. Black Dynamite, TBA. Mm-hmm. Okay. Dems the movie orders. Hope do the right thing it. is next. Do the right thing. And okay. for our final bit of talking, James the gun. The gun, the gun, gun, gun. gun, 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 gun. James, James, James the weapon gun. James he made me excited for DC. I, I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. Same, he, made me, he made me... I, I watched the, I, the, the Twitter video with Spidey. Mm-hmm. And he really does have... Like, when he talked, he has a... Like, just a passion for comic book and storytelling. So I like, you could see that. And like the knowledge that he had, like he was like, maybe like, obviously cause he's a fucking writer. He's going to have better knowledge than we would, but I never knew about some of the stuff that he was telling me about that happens yeah. in comic books. Like I didn't know about Batman having like a Robin. That was his son. I never knew that ever existed. Ooh, yeah. So that, that's, that's I'm, I'll also, a lot of these are going to be animated too. And that's where DC really, really, yeah, really yeah. DC is king of the animations. And I also think this is the optimal time for DC to really get their shit together and i think they could do a lot of uh damage to uh i I can't speak for every mcu fan but me personally i am getting heavily fatigued i am too with just the onslaught of content it's good when i watch it but i'm just like god damn i haven't had time to process the last thing i saw like it's just kind of worried it might just be superhero fatigue in general but i think we're gonna see i'm gonna name off some of the projects yeah go for it creature commandos what's that about a seven episode animated series written by Gunn that is already in production. Nice. Originally a team of classic monsters assembled to fight Nazis. <laughs> okay. okay. I'm in. This All is right. a modern take on the concept. The voice actors have been cast. I'm in. We got Waller. I'm down for that. 100%. Uh, yeah, a spinoff of Peacemaker. Viola Davis will return as the ruthless, morally ambiguous head of government task force. That's gonna be is cold. she morally ambiguous? She's just bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know if she's ambiguous. <laughs> Superman Legacy. The movie featuring the Man of Steel. Okay, new mm. Superman movie. Go for it. Sure. I don't care for Superman. We got Lanterns. That's going to be the biggest blockbuster one to me. For yeah. real, bro. The Lantern universe is so much bigger than people really know. If they bring all the attention to it, yeah, it's man. Slide. I'm, the, oh, oh, I'm oh, thinking oh, oh. of Lantern. I'm thinking of uh, that one guy, uh, Green Lantern. Green Lantern. They're doing Green Hal yeah. Jordan and John Stewart. Listen, listen. In its place, it will be taking uh, a new take on the space cops with power rings. And they said our vision is very much in the vein of True Detective. Nice. Oh shit. What? Okay. Yeah, like Green Lantern isn't even like Earth's hero. He's the sector that we're in like he runs space that bro's got bitch he's got shit to do yeah he got shit to do <laughs> uh the authority a movie based on a team of superheroes with rather extreme methods of protecting the planet that first originated in the late 1990s okay. i feel i'm just gonna read the rest instead of going off yeah, yeah, yeah. we got a thing called paradise loss uh the brave and the bold batman. which is this is the introduction of the dcu batman 
Um, that one's going to be awesome. Batman sequel with Pattinson or pa- Pattinson. Robert Batmanson. That one's going to be great too. That because the Batman was great. Uh, Booster Gold, an HBO Max series based <laughs> on a unique, lesser-known hero created in 1986. It's about a loser from the future who uses basic future technology to come back to today and pretend to be a superhero. I'm down for that. Fun. That's that be funny. Sounds that's hilarious. Awesome. That sounds <laughs> that's funny. Shit. See, that's a rich. That, that's good. Uh, that's we got good. Swamp Thing. We got Supergirl. Swamp Thing's gonna hit. Uh, yeah, I kind of feel like they're gonna go the fuck off. They said the Supergirl they're doing isn't gonna be the nice one. She's the one that basically got stranded on like the radiative radiation rock piece of Krypton, and she's just pissed off when she gets here. Okay. I'm down for that. All too. debris from Krypton lands on Earth eventually. Um, I I'm yeah, excited. I'm, I'm 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 excited, but I'm also concern, concerned that it might just be superhero fatigue. I, I, me and Marquez have been going out of our way to like watch films and like watch movies that I'm like, this isn't about a fucking comic book from forever ago, and yeah. I love that. Well, I think for like the general mainstream, I I strongly feel there's a big MCU fatigue. So I know DC is still superheroes, but it might be like, oh, something different. You yeah. Know? Mm-hmm. I'm super excited for it. I think the uh, I think it's gonna kick ass. I don't think James Gunn really fucks around too much, so it'll be good. Yeah. Well, guys, anything you want to add? Are you guys excited for Do the Right Thing? Oh, should I? What do you, What do I need to tell you about Do the Right Thing? Don't tell me anything. Yeah, just let him go. I'm blind. Okay. It's, I, I already right, watched the trailer. Anyways, Look, it's, it's, it's not a heist. Go. I already watched the trailer. I'm mm-hmm. actually excited because there's a Spike Lee and there's someone. Just, Spike Lee's first oh, movie. Oh, it's a Spike Lee. Yeah, it's and his then first one. there's a couple of actors I was surprised at dying. Samuel L. Jackson and then didn't the uh, Spike Lee the one write one of the 2K games? NBA 2K? What? I don't think he wrote a 2K game. Did he not nah, write Def Jam? Nah, you're just racist. No, no, I swear to God. Because <laughs> I played that one. It was like the, the main campaign storyline was it was a Spike Lee story. I mean, it might be. I, I, um, I can't, I, when I play 2K, I don't play my career. Okay. That's weird. All right, so <laughs> I'm trying to look. Oh, 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 oh. Here are, uh, here are some of the people that are in the movie. Spike Lee. Uh, oh, yeah, that is right. John Turturro. I like him. Gene Carlo Esposito. Oh shit! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Danny Aiello, um, and uh, oh my god, I forget her. Oh, Rosie Perez. Ooh, oh yeah. shit! She was in uh, White Man Can't Jump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's another one of my crushes. Oh well, you're gonna like this movie. Um, <laughs> I'm excited. Uh, this one is a fun one. Uh, Samuel Jackson's also in it. Um, yeah, it's a good fucking movie, man. Um, okay. I didn't see it until I was older, and I guess the question is going to be. Did he do the right thing? Dun, 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 dun. Oh. <laughs> so I guess keep that in mind while watching it. Will, um, will we have new music next week? New music? Yep. Bum, so bum. New music oh week. yeah, we're going to have bum, new uh, intro bum, music. Bum. I'm killing the old one. I'm going to take it and burn it. Wow. wow. So I hope you guys like the new intro song. Okay. Uh, it should okay. be fine. All right. All right. Anyway, uh, stay tuned for the raid. Yeah. Raid. Hey, we got to do shit today raid. at 3 o'clock. Raid. We're playing Golden Eye. Golden Eye. Golden Eye with the boys. Whoa. Follow us, baby. It's always inverted. Hit it. Hit it. You guys, there's a woodpecker outside. You know, I know. I was staring at it the whole time. Yeah, I couldn't stop looking. Oh, yeah. Look at him. You He's going. He's better not fuck my house up. That's what I'm saying. Why would he fuck up your house, man? Uh, because. Talking noise. Yeah.